it was a really difficult time because when you've like you know we were living together we were working together we were like you know in the trenches together um and then you know and then he, he took a bit of cash out the account with like without speaking to me about it and that was like people's wages and it just got really really messy And have you got any horror stories with uh, with either this business partner or, or any other ones, or, or also you know the the, uh, the investor you took in? You know, I guess he's re reasonably silent. I mean, I you know I I get a lot of calls from people saying you know I've got this problem with an investor, or I've got this, this you know this this problem problem with a partner, and you know and, and normally they always they never really come back to exciting legal business issues. You know, it's always down to down to you know personality clashes or you know I guess miscommunication that needs resolving in some kind of normal humane you know conversational manner than you know than, than, than wafting legal letters and stuff around but uh, you know uh, it's I think for me anyone who's ever had a partner as no, no matter how good those relationships have been there's always been some kind of problems along the way have you, you got anything you can share with us yeah for sure <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any business that hasn't got one of these stories um, so the investor was great he was a really really nice guy really helped us um you know i think at the time it felt like the best deal i would never take anyone's money now especially as a small business because you have to ask yourself what do i need the money for but it felt like the best deal what because you were kind of skint at the time and it was, Definitely. It, was it was money it was validation well when you're first starting it's all you're doing is just looking at how much money you have in the bank and we weren't really paying ourselves anything at all so this was like you know that investment was like oh fine i could just take like a couple of grand for myself you know i was just sick of eating like rice and sandwiches every day i was like you know where are your black hoodie yeah i'm wearing my same black hoodie every single day I, I still carried on wearing it for many years but um it helped us definitely and it was a signal it was a signal that we were like doing something right it's like if this guy wants to invest in us we must we're going on to something you know um but yeah i wouldn't i think the main question with investment is like what do you need the money for and if it's cash flow that's a terrible idea new business can give you money you know like we weren't really um the money we had if it was to hire more people it's like we well, need to go and get more clients yeah. and then hire more people like the money you get from the clients is your is your investment to hire new people but i didn't know any of this and i really didn't know properly how to run a business at this stage um so we get about i don't know maybe a year and a half in and we've we needed to get a bigger office so we've like you know really pulled out the stops we've, we've made a bit of cash so we went and got like this big office it's like 1300 square foot or whatever um and we spent you know maybe 10 12 grand like kitting it all out and it looked amazing you know we got these interior designers working with it all this stuff that we definitely definitely shouldn't have done because you know i think you get excited and there's ego that comes with this as well where you're like I, we want to be the coolest creative agency and we want to be better than our competitors in manchester which they didn't matter we didn't need to think about them but i was kind of obsessed with like we need to be the coolest one and i had this vision for how it needed to look and we did we built this amazing office and then the problem came is we weren't getting as many clients as we were so cash flow starts to move around my business partner at the time alex it was just too much for him he got really, really stressed. And one day um, I came into the office with his lunch and he just wasn't there. And I was like, where are you? And he didn't reply for like three days. And then he was like, I don't want to be in the business anymore. And that was it. He'd gone to Nuki where his family were and he, he never came back after that. Wow. So then... Did, have you been in contact since? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a really difficult time because when you've like, you know, we were living together, we were working together. We were like, you know, in the trenches together. Um, and then, you know, and then he, he took a bit of cash out the account with like, without speaking to me about it. And that was like people's wages. And it just got really, really messy. Um, and then I realized like that we just did not understand how VAT worked and we didn't have enough. We were like going into our VAT fund to pay some wages. And we were like, you know, trying to play that game of not separating the funds. And like, the only thing you need to do in business is just put your money to VAT to one side and don't look at it. And then at the end of the year, if you've got enough back, that's a bonus that goes back in the account. I wish I knew that at the time. So we, you know, we start getting behind on payments for stuff. Then I had this client that tried to sue us because he'd lost his investment. So then he was like trying to scrape money together. So we had to pay for like these court fees. And this was the investor. No, oh. no, this was a client that we had. He'd lost his investor okay. and he was opening up a series of gyms. So he decided to try and sue everyone he'd worked with 
on the gym to try and reclaim some of the money back because he'd right. spent the first phase of the investment on all of these people to work on the project for him which you know like you know i don't hold anything against him now but for us when i was already having like you know the VAT problem piling up, people's salaries, my business partner leaving. It literally felt like, you know, my world was crashing down. And there were just so many nights where I'd be sat in the office, you know, till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. And I would just be like, I, I just don't know how, how I'm going to do this. I don't know how, how I'm going to get more money. Like, even if I go out there and win 10 more clients, I don't know how we're going to be able to pay this. And the debt's piling up and I'm just thinking, what, what am I doing this for? You know, like I'm not making any money. Like I'm everything I'm doing is just to pay everyone. And I'm like, this is, this is going to collapse. And then things got worse. <laughs> then that uh, old business partner, Alex, he takes a job at another agency and he puts out a press release. At this point, I've not told our clients and I've not even told all of the team. Cause I was like, you know, I need to kind of like figure yeah. out how I'm going to put this message out there. And the problem is, is when you um, tell your story online, you open yourself up for other people to peer into your life. So, you know, if you build your business quietly, no one will look into your business. But if you build it publicly, people are always waiting to see if you're going to fail. And so this article comes out. We have like, you know, an exodus of clients going, what's happening at Noir? Do we need to like stop this project? Are you guys going to be able to complete it? Why is your business partner left? Why is he announced he's at a new company? I'm just like, oh, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Anyway, I keep working and working and working and trying to get out of it. And I'm, you know, pulling together new clients. The staff are like getting pretty worried at this point because they can see that I'm stressed. I must have looked like shit as well because I was probably sleeping like three hours a night. Um, and then I got to a point where I just went and spoke to a liquidator and I was like, what are my options here? I've got this VAT bill piling up. I've got the office rent, which is huge. You know, I've got um, a bunch of clients that have not paid us. I've got these court fees that I paid to win against this guy who's trying to sue us, which we won in the end. But it, it you know, it must have cost us a fortune, you know, to get to that point just to to win this case against him, um, and all of that time and energy as well. Um, and then um, essentially, what happened is that uh, I spoke to the liquidator, and he said, "What we can do." is we could do something called like a pre-pack administration um, where you can, you know, you can close down the company and you can sell this into like a new entity and this will clear a lot of your debts off and it, this will help you be able to like relaunch under something else. Um, so I'm like, well, that, that sounds like a good idea. It's not really what I want to do. I don't want to fail. You know, I had it in my head like I can't fail, I can't fail. And at the time of all of this as well, there's one major part I've missed out is we keep winning awards. We're constantly winning awards. So, you know, there's all these articles going out about Noir's success. So it was a similar story to like what happened when I was like 27 and everyone thinks you're successful. Everyone's saying, congratulations, what you've done at Noir is amazing. But at the same time, I'm looking at, at you know, the, the, the bank balance and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to pay people, or let alone pay myself all these debts. Um, so anyway, uh, I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to have to sort of close down the company. So I, I start to go through this process of the pre-pack administration and, and launching under a new entity. And then um, someone like sees what's going on, someone from outside. So they released this article just like absolutely slamming me. Like he's a monster, like who's claiming the, all this success. This someone as just this random reporter. Um, and he just decided to to pick on me and his art uh, he, he released this article and it was something like you know um the uh, business awards are a joke and it had a photo of me at the front of it and this ship just went viral and i was like oh my god this is like the last thing that anyone wants in their life and i never realized how horrible it is to hear lots of people discussing something about you when they don't know what's really going on um so yeah this is this is like all over the internet and i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do <laughs> and then you know my team are asking me all these questions um and it was just a, it was just a really really tough time again i would say that was like one of the hardest things i've ever gone through and were you were you trading in the new business at this point the, the we'd not one? even done the the pre-pack thing yeah. we just started to go through the process of it but when you do that to liquidate a company you list it on like the gazette yeah, or yeah. something and like someone had picked up on it and at the same time seen we were winning these awards so they were like oh he's a fraud he's winning awards and you know like 
we can't slam people for failing in business. It's like, it's part of the process. Like there's not really many entrepreneurs out there that haven't gone through something really, really difficult with either cash flow or, you know, like, you know, a business partner leaving or investment pulled or whatever it is, like business is hard. But at the time, the narrative was just like, I was like just this monster that was like parading ourselves as winning these awards while struggling in the background. But I'm like, no one ever comes out and goes, oh, we haven't got much revenue coming in at the moment and we're really struggling with debt. Like I've never seen that as a LinkedIn post in my life. You know, people only talk about the things that they're doing well, um, which is obviously a problem as well. You know, people should talk about when things are hard, but the connotation of if I post things are really hard right now is like you're going to lose clients yep. you're not going to gain clients by saying things are tough you know um and, and did you but you did the liquidate you did the pre-pack in the end you did the so yeah we ended up doing uh the pre-pack but what we what we ended up doing um is instead of starting a new entity we sold the noir brand we packaged up the whole brand and sold it to uh, a company which was a partner of mine so they were a marketing agency uh called roto um, and that became Noir. Uh, and then I sort of like sat in the background, you know, still running the company, but as more like an advisory role, just cause you have to do that. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, you know, we, we, we relaunched Noir, but we changed it. It wasn't the same business.